Okay, so for the next part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the bracket on. And the reason I do that is after I get the bracket on, now i got kind of something to grab on the card. I don't have to worry about picking the card up by the circuit board anymore. So if you can see, you slide that right over and it fits perfectly. Now the mini HDMI, HDMI connection, it looks like with some luck I will be able to use that connection, but I'm not 100% sure. I usually use DVI anyway, so it's not a big factor. But for those of you that want to use this bracket and use the mini HDMI connection, you, you probably could, to be honest with you. Okay. So I get all four of those on there and I just tighten them down. Pretty simple here. Now these will be the only thing holding the bracket on there, but I think that's pretty stout. I take my needle nose pliers and I turn it probably a quarter turn just to get them locked. You don't want to over tighten anything on these cards. There. As you can see, it ain't going anywhere. Okay, I got the bracket on my card, so let's go ahead and get my uh, water block out of the box. Here's my water block. I've already done the, an unboxing on it. Set that off to the side for now. Let's get my materials out. Now I will tell you one thing. Someone showed me an EK unboxing for their water block for the GTX 480. And one thing that EK did that I like over the cool lance is that all the thermal pads come pre-cut. So you don't have to cut them, you just peel them off and you stick them where they need to go. And I'll tell you what, that I like that. Okay. Okay, now it's time to... I use the thin material. Now it's time to cut the interface material. And what I do, I'm not going to actually film cutting it, but what I do is... I usually line it up and kind of make a beginning cut here and then I'll go here and then I'll make a beginning cut there and then I know you know where to cut it and then I trim it up to make sure it fits now from the other one that I done this right here this pad is plenty I actually made one mistake when I was cutting it I still had enough so you should have enough if you buy the cool lance block and again if something happens you can always use the thicker stuff Okay, now I have all my thermal pads cut, and of course you can use the instruction sheet that comes with the water block to do that. It actually gives you the sizes on here on what to cut it at, if you can see that. Uh, I just line them up, I don't measure it. Okay, what I've learned with Cool Lance uh, thermal interface pads is there's a gray side and a blue side. Take the, the clear plastic that's off the gray side first, apply that to the water block. Because the blue side is made to come up really easy. If you put this side down first like that, when you pull the, the plastic side or the clear side up off the gray side, it wants to pull the pad off of the block. So pull this off second. See, it's real easy to, it's real easy to get up. Okay, and I use my screwdriver to go ahead and start. So what I do is slide it under the clear plastic, pull it away from the pad, and then I place the pad. I push it down to make sure I get all the bubbles out. And there, that's it. The last thing I'll do is pull that off. So let me go ahead and get these others.
to show you how the blue part comes off. All you do is you put your screwdriver underneath the thin blue film and you pull it up. See, it would not be this easy if I'd done if I had the clear plastic on the top. It'll it'll pull the uh, thermal interface pad right up. And you want you want to pull it slowly because once one of these touch and come up. And get a big knot, next thing you know, you've ruined it. And these are actually looking pretty good. I don't see any bubbles in them so far. Okay, there you go. I got all of them up and it's ready to mount onto the uh, graphics card.